Tatum, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, what a great way to start, kick off the week, Monday morning interview. Uh, it's great to speak with you. You've been up to a lot of amazing, amazing things yeah. recently. And honestly, just for like the past decade, you started um, really getting into music um, at a young age. So I always ask when people are kind of discovering that passion at a young age, do you feel like that's an advantage for you because you get to, you know, see, kind of grow up with it? Or would you say it also has some cons because you kind of learn from a young age, like the harsh realities that sometimes the music industry presents to people? I see both for sure. Um, I'm really thankful that I did start at a young age because I've had opportunities that like at like just 12 or like just when I was young to perform and be on stage that not a lot of people had. So it helped me definitely grow as a performer. So I'm definitely thankful for those but at the same time I mean it would be also really fun to have like my first performance maybe just two years ago and have those mm -hmm. butterflies again like I still get butterflies but nothing beats like when I was 12 and or younger and doing my first performance and having those same feelings but I think it's definitely an advantage to be used to the stage and being comfortable on it and performing yes. And I love that you still get butterflies. I love hearing that because I used to um, do recitals here and there and I would always get them. And I thought it was like so weird, like, oh, you should be used to it. But honestly, I feel like a lot of artists, more artists than not, probably feel the same way. Oh, so. yeah. Even like the smallest performance still gives me butterflies. I usually like perform in church a lot and we literally have not that many people. <laughs> and I still get like scared and like, I'm just like, I don't know why I'm scared. Like I'm talking to my friends and like, I'm just kind of nervous. And they're like, really? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> like it never goes away from me. I don't know. No, but, it, it really yeah. doesn't. But I think that's a cool thing because that's such a um, pivotal thing that happens to musicians when they're first starting out. So in a way you get to relive that same feeling every time, even yeah. though it might not be the most comfortable feeling. It's still, yeah. like, it's a nostalgic thing for you, I think. Yeah. So very true. Um, mm -hmm. And I have to say, I love Lauren Christie so much and you got to work with her I saw that and I screamed because she <laughs> worked with Avril Lavigne on her song it was in me and that's one of my favorite songs so yeah um I'm wondering if when you found out you would be working with her if there was anything like wow this person's huge or did you do your research how did that go oh I did I was blown away I was like really nervous to meet her and like work on our first song together and I remember when I like first like talked or like started writing with her because we co-wrote a couple songs um I would just sit there I'm like I want to chip in but at the same time you're so amazing I think like maybe I should like hold back <laughs> but like I don't know but she's like just so amazing that like it was just incredible to be in a room with her and just like experience her talent Mm -hmm. because it's like no other I totally agree with you I was like such a fangirl when I first met her and now she's like one of like my really good friends we text oh. every once in a while I send her funny things and she's just she's a sweetheart she's so talented and has such a great heart too so I love her oh I I love hearing stories like that what a great uh I and I love that you've been able to keep in touch with her beyond um just that's those writing sessions yeah. Um, and that brings me to my next point. I feel like a lot of times um, there are young artists like you, I feel like I see both sides. I see young artists who kind of want full creative control and then young artists who want, they want that control, but they also want an elaborate team behind them. And I feel like you kind of fall somewhere in the middle. So I'm wondering how you navigate that space because I'm sure it does get difficult to be like, I really want to write this, but I have this opportunity with this amazing person. What do I do? Yeah. Honestly, just growing up, I always liked writing my own music. And um, I just felt really comfortable because I'm the person, even in like school projects, I'm like, let me do everything. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, I'm like, can I just do the whole PowerPoint and just make sure I like it? Like, I was that person, I have to admit. I was. But, yeah, <laughs> I feel like a lot of people are on that same page with me. With music, especially like writing songs with other people, especially with Lauren Christie, it definitely was pretty easy for me to open up and do that because I could tell from the first writing session that I was growing as a songwriter. It was not like keeping me back, like 
it definitely opened my mind to new things and she would talk me through things whenever I was stuck at a writing block or something like that. And it was first, like I would have to say, I was kind of worried. I was like, I don't know how good I'll be writing with someone. But once like literally the first like sentence of the song, I was like, oh, this is gonna be easy. This is gonna be great. And I was just so comfortable. And now I actually kind of prefer co-writing with people because it just, talking about it with other people makes me branch out more into my ideas and it makes it easier for me to write. Some mm -hmm. people would think like it would be like complicated trying to decide, but it's actually easier because when it's just me, I'm like, oh, I wish I could ask someone if this makes sense or like it takes me a little bit longer i'm like maybe i'll sit with this but having a couple people and just bouncing off of each other really really helps yeah and you have that person you can ask right then and there you know yeah so, so that's also very very convenient um especially when you're friends with them and understand each other it works even better yes when you have that connection that level of trust i'm sure that mm -hmm. helps a lot it's not like this complete strange encounter um yeah and who would you say is your dream person to co-write with and then your dream person to do um a song with i would love to co-write with julia michaels <laughs> i love her so much all of her songs oh she's amazing every time i like listen to a song i think it was selena gomez lose you to love me I read and I was like, I think this is a Julia Michaels song. And I went and read it and it was Julia Michaels. It's just like, now I know, like it's I read. so her. weird. You can tell. Mm -hmm. She has, yeah. She's amazing. Um, so I would love to co-write with her. And she's just someone I've always really wanted to do that with. And was the second question sing with or like yeah. collab? Sing with. Mm -hmm. That's hard. Because I have like so many people I would love this to do that with. <laughs> Well, like, obviously, like, Shawn Mendes, I always had kind of a crush on Shawn Mendes, his amazing. voice, everything, just him, overall person, amazing <laughs> vocals. Yes. The second person I would love to collab with is Justin Timberlake, and whenever I tell people that, they're kind of like, that's kind of random, like. No, I, I get him a lot, uh, funny enough. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I do. That makes me, yeah, that makes me feel better. <laughs> um, well, he's amazing anyway, so. Yeah. He um, is. He's just, like, triple threat like songwriting music amazing voice and a great performer and dancer yeah. that's just something I was always like aiming for in my career just to kind of be like him and like be strong at each of those categories or at least try to be yeah well you are don't doubt yourself <laughs> there and I think it is important especially um with being in a pandemic we're not really able to have live shows so you have to use your tiny iphone screen to get your message across and you know sometimes there's great power in doing like a intimate acoustic set but then i'm sure we all miss like the, you know, the performances with the crowd and all the choreography so i totally understand what you're saying um have you been able to do any fun little live streams or not quite yet i've been doing them um i did them for a while uh on facebook it was like every week, but since it's starting to get around the holidays and things like that, I'm taking a little break from the live streams right now because yeah. <laughs> everybody's like with their family, like all, I have a whole band I usually perform with. So I was like, we're going to play it safe and take a little break and then come back after the holidays. Oh yeah, that's smart. But well, yeah, I'm we were doing live streams for a while with my band and just a bunch of recordings and it was a lot of fun. Well, I look forward to that when it is back, but it is also very important to take breaks. I'm yeah, a yeah. firm believer in taking breaks, um, even though sometimes it's hard. Um, it hard sure. And what I also loved is that um, you are very into music therapy, sound therapy. So um, I was actually wondering I, um, if you could just explain that you have a nonprofit for it and also just reiterate the power of music because it's so... Yeah. It's something to take for granted, honestly. I'm sure you can attest to that. So Yeah, no, definitely. So when I was 15, I created a 501c3 nonprofit called Music as Therapy. And our whole goal with Music as Therapy was to provide instruments and music therapists to other nonprofits or just schools who can't afford those things. Um, mainly dealing with kids with um, Down syndrome or also on the spectrum for autism. And I really got into this because my best friend threw out when I was little um, and he was my best buddy in like every grade. Um, he was pretty high on the spectrum of autism 
and music really, really helped him and music therapy really helped him just get through the day and his classes. And I saw um, the budget cut um, at the schools cut out music therapy and I saw him struggling and I saw a lot of the other kids that I work with struggling and I was like, I need to do something about this because this is heartbreaking and I wish I could personally help him, but I was like 12 or like, I'm not 12. 15. I was 15 at the time. I was young. I was like, I don't have a degree in music therapy. Like I can sit and play music with him and do that, but he needs more than just that. So uh, I started working with people, reaching out to people to help fund and raise money to provide these music therapists to come into the schools and these organizations to help my friends. And it was just kind of a growing process from then because just by seeing that impact, I started to see like like a domino effect helping other kids in their lives. And it even opened my eyes more to how important this music was just to help my friend Tommy get through the day. So yeah, it's such a source of comfort. And I actually, I went to a performing arts school and it was the budget cuts affected us greatly. Not only the kids who had special needs and that 45 minute class was such a great relief for them, but just, anyone who used yeah. music as a source of learning. And I guess the sad thing is if there was no evidence it helped to be one thing, but there's so much research that shows how vital it is. So I'm so thankful for people like you who see that and, you know, can back up these claims that it, it really is a helpful tool. It's not just some, you know, music kids who want to, you know, have more music at school. Like it's definitely not that it's so much more and just being yeah. able to provide people with Great resources. So thank you for sharing that. Um, it, do you want to um, give the Instagram for that? I just want to make sure that people know where to find more info on that specifically. Oh, yeah. So for Music as Therapy, um, you can find us on Instagram at Music as Therapy USA. And then it's also linked to my Instagram, just at Tatum and Music. You can find it in my bio too. Perfect. Yeah, that's how I found it. No, thank yeah. you. I just had to give one. But <laughs> anyway, um, I wanted to move yeah. into your latest work, Let Down Your Hair. What I love is it's, it reminds me um, of like when you whip my hair, like whip my hair back and forth. That song by Willow Smith, like let down your hair and kind of like yeah. fancy. I love that message. Um, yeah. I don't know. That was just a weird throwback. I'm a very nostalgic person. So I was just like trying to connect the dots. That's how my brain works. Yeah. Um, but do you just want to give the meaning behind that specifically if it's cool, specifically how it pertains to, uh, social media and our views of social media and all the things that can happen on social media that are not how social media should be used? Yeah. So I started writing, I wrote Let Down Your Hair. Like I started it before the pandemic actually happened. Mm -hmm. I started writing it with Lauren Christie and Joey Barba. And um, it was actually, um, it was like a couple weeks before the shutdown and everything like that. And um, it was the day we like put pencil to paper to start writing this song was the day after we found out Kobe Bryant died. And um, I remember I flew into LA, obviously this was before everything that's happened. And I flew into LA and I, um, like I could just see like the impact this man had on everyone. And like, everyone's just, was just super sad. I obviously was super sad. And um, that's all we could talk about in our writing session, how short life is and how we need to live our lives. So that's how actually the song started. We didn't finish that day. Um, we kind of just put a pause on it just to keep thinking more about it. So it started off as live your life. Life is short, love every minute of it. And then once the shutdown happened. I was more on social media. Um, and that was, became our everyday thing. And our one thing of like communication, yeah. I could see like the negativity on social media. There's a lot of positivity, but there's a lot of negativity yeah. and it just really hurt me. And I could just see that like people were struggling, especially during a shutdown. Like you don't need that negativity in your life. And I personally had to remind myself to like push away what I'm seeing on social media, push away all the negativity in my life or anything like that. And to make sure to let down my hair and still be me. Cause it was, it's always hard to remember to be yourself in a world that wants you to be perfect. 
like they expect you to be perfect in a way and social media also does it's a highlight of everyone's lives you know yeah so it just shows your most perfect moment of your day so I just wanted to remind people to make sure to let down their hair and to remember that it's okay not to be that perfect image that you are on social media Mm -hmm. and just to live your life and know that it is short and you should love every minute of it and love who you are yes and it's such a great message for every day but especially now when a lot of people are just it's hard to be positive and that's not to say we have to be positive all the time it's like important to grieve or make room for whatever emotions but absolutely it's also so important to remember to be grateful so I totally totally um agree with you there um and I wanted to move into next month you have your album coming out and it's 14 trucks right yes that's amazing um normally it's like eps which are shorter but this is your full length album so do you want to just kind of give any <clears throat> I, i'm not going to say updates because we know when it's coming yeah. but just anything um regarding any storylines or any themes throughout the album that people would be interested in my whole goal for this album was to have a song for everyone um through like whatever mood you're going through it's not definitely like each song is a happy song. Some of them are the emotional, like trying to connect with you more and like your sad feelings. And then there's let down your hair that's on the albums. Like you're amazing. Let down your hair, be yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's just my goal for this album was to have a song for everyone and every mood that you face every single day. So that's kind of the theme for the album. And yeah, so there's just a mix of all different moods and all di- all different songs on it. So I'm excited for people to hear that and to experience it. Yes, I'm so excited to listen to it. And something I like to ask artists when their album is longer is, do you recommend listening to the songs in any particular order? Or do you, it, can it kind of be a free-for-all? I think it can be a free-for-all. Cool. Yeah, because, yeah, I just think it would be a free-for-all because all of them are different telling different stories is not an exact storyline that I know like some people do but this is definitely free for all doesn't have to be in order I love that because I like to listen on shuffle so (laughs) that's what I do too that's what I like to do and I forget if it was Beyonce's um was it Lemonade that was in order or I think yes yeah was it I remember you had to listen to that in order and if I skipped one I was like wait I gotta go back and like figure this out real quick so this one is just you can shuffle and Whichever one fits your thoughts, your mood that day. So, yeah. Um, and obviously it's very difficult to <clears throat> film any type of music videos or uh, lyric videos or promos for the songs. But when the lockdown is over, do you plan on doing music videos for any of them? Yes. Um, I actually did, a, I don't know if you saw my music video for Let Down Your Hair. Yes. Yeah, we did a um, little video for that. And we all like got COVID tested and we were like very, very safe for that. And we filmed it in one day. And I honestly, it was not like the most professional video because we couldn't have like a whole team there. It was just filmed by um, Benji Schwimmer who directed and um, he was the choreographer for the video. It was just filmed by him. And um, I feel like I'll probably continue to do like small self film, probably mm-hmm. videos like that at the highest quality that I can make it without getting a whole team during these times. But hopefully after the lockdown, I can go out and film very professional videos for these because I would love that. Some of these songs, I definitely would love to have that experience with these, with them. Yeah, like a full on music video. But I got to say, I've really been enjoying watching the ones that people have made during this time. And it, I'm sure, <clears throat> I mean, I can't speak for you, but I have a feeling it kind of shows you like you can do this and you might have picked up some new skills on directing and all that because you're you're almost forced to you know yeah and it's definitely having me think about like the future when I'm able to record these big music videos and it's like okay I can't do this now but what should be my idea when I'm able to so it just gets me thinking and like turns that creative switch on even more I feel like than usual when you're kind of stuck in a way and yeah and uh Totally. Well, I'm excited to see what you come up with. That's so, so, so exciting. Um, And something else that I've been asking um, 
a lot of artists that uh, no one has seemed to get tired of, so I'm going to ask you. Um, okay. Maybe you'll be my last one. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> um, but I feel like when we're in a pandemic or in a lockdown, we have a tendency to um, feel this pressure to be productive 24-7. So I'm wondering, have you experienced that? And if so, have you experienced creative burnout? And how are you navigating that whole idea? That's definitely something I've been struggling with. I feel like every time I wake up in the morning, I need to do something productive. Um, some days it's great and I'm very productive and I'm doing everything music and I feel like very good about it. And then other days, it's like every other person, you have days that you struggle maybe a little bit. So I definitely do have a burnout and some days I'm just not as creative as others. And I've come to accept that and it's definitely kind of hard to accept since that's like the thing going on in your life mm -hmm. but that's still something I'm trying to get better at and be more productive with but it's yeah. it's so hard like I feel for you one of my favorite quotes that I learned in um college was downtime is productive time yes. I wholeheartedly agree with that like giving yourself downtime will re um like reset you so that when it's time to be productive you're as productive as possible so but I totally get it it's hard to not want to feel like you have to be writing 24 7 because there's nothing else to do but no I totally get it it's a really hard balance so I just wanted to share that with you you're not alone I promise that I appreciate that a lot actually that means a lot oh of course of course um well Tatum thank you again so much for this interview I just wanted to do a little like recap if you want to um just recap your album, um, your songs that are currently out and how people can stream them everywhere as well as um, just all your social media handles. Yeah, so I will be releasing my album this next month in January. And uh, my most recent song out is Let Down Your Hair, which is available on all streaming services, Spotify, Apple Music, you name it, it is there. And my social media handle is um, Tatum Lynn Music for all the social media. And yeah, I'm excited for you guys to hear the new songs. Perfect. Well, I'm so excited to hear them next month and I'll make sure to um, post about it as well. But everyone, make sure to go follow Tatum on all platforms. Go listen to Let Down Your Hair. It's a great bop. So I think everyone will enjoy it. Thank you. Of course. Thank you again so much for your interview and giving me such a great way to start my week. This was awesome. Yeah, of course. It's a great start to the week for me too. Oh, good. And I hope to meet you in person someday. And I'd love to do a follow-up interview at one of your shows. We can do something backstage. Maybe that might make that. your butterflies worse. So if so, I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be great. I would love that so much. Awesome. We'll definitely have to set that up then.